Hey fun fans, Nick here, and I hope everyone is having a very successful Rescape build season. I am here back to review team updates 3, 4, 5, and 6, and highlight three Q&A questions and answers that could prove to be important for your team to monitor throughout the build season, and also introduce a tech topic that I want to hear from you, the community, in the comments about. All of this and more coming up on this episode of FRC Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. So let's jump right into Team Update 3. Um, noted that this has come out, um, you know, a couple weeks ago since we've recorded, but wanted to essentially um, let a couple of team updates pile up so we could make a, you know, overall video that the community would sink in and get a lot of information at once. So some of this info might be dated, but I think it's important to go over still, um, even though that it's been, you know, a couple days that it's been released. Uh, joining team update three, one of the first things that they um, updated section 5.6.1 driver stations. Um, they've added the notion that due to space constraints, the ramp is not allowed to be used in the processor area. So if uh, your team is um, going to have issues with that or might need that accommodation, please make sure to reach out to your regional and district events. And please contact with your local program delivery partner about those accommodations. Uh, section 5.6.2, the Coral Station. Uh, similarly, they also added due to space constraints, the stools are not allowed to be used in the processor area. So if you notice that in the kickoff video and a lot of the uh, field tour videos, they noted that at the Coral Station, there is the ability to be able to use a stool. Um, and first is essentially saying that due to the space constraints on the field, um, the stools are not allowed to be used in the processor area. So if you're planning on that, make sure to review and discuss with your program delivery partner if necessary. Um, in the algae section, they added um, to clarification that such that they are placed lightly onto the reef, so make sure to clarify that, and that staged algae will not contact coral placed on level 4. Um, jumping on to scoring element scoring criteria, um, they added the notion that um, and the coral is not in contact with the robot on that alliance or an algae. So if your robot um, is not in contact with that coral, it will be scored, and there can only be one coral scored per branch as we're expecting. Um, and they also added in the notion that an algae is scored in a processor once it has passed through the opening of the processor, and by the sensor array, an algae is scored in a net if it is above the net contacting the net or algae containing the net and not in contact with the robot on that alliance. So, if for some reason, um, you know, the that one of your opposing alliance members is in contact with the algae and you were not, it seems like that that would be counted. But be sure to consult the official Q&A and the official manual for official clarification. Um, furthermore, jumping into robot scoring criteria, this is a big one for me, and if you haven't caught this, I, I want to hone in and make sure you're paying attention to this. A lot of teams were talking about, right on kickoff, about possibly using two cages um, to be able to climb, whether that was shallow or deep cages. And first has actually come out, um, you know, a, a good amount of time after kickoff and noted that to qualify for cage points, a robot must be contacting one and only one cage and not touching any anchor. So essentially, if you're a robot that is touching two cages or you're designing a mechanism to be able to climb either shallow or deep cages and you utilize two cages, that climb is no longer going to count. So if your team was um, looking into that and looking into that design, make sure to consult the manual and the Q&A for official details. Jumping down to 6.6, .6, um, uh, alliance is ineligible for an RP. They added that an alliance is ineligible for the specified RP for that match. This overrides any RP awarded through normal match play or other rule violations. So be sure to uh, check the certain violations that an alliance would be ineligible for an RP um, in the game manual. Um, they just added some clarification to G421. No more than one robot um, may be on the opponent's side of the field with the bumpers fully outside and beyond the barge zones. So theoretically, if you got one robot that's completely downfield and another that's in the barge zone, but the, their bumpers are not fully outside of the barge zone, it seems like that would still be legal. But again, be sure to consult the manual and the Q&A for official clarification. Um, and added some notion to bumper construction um, for G402 and G407. Jumping to uh, team update four, 
Um, we're going to be looking at an algae update. So again, this is this got posted, um, I believe, January 17th, so about 10 days ago now. But if you haven't got a chance to review this, I want to highlight this. Um, but it noted in the previous blog that both the clamshell and the crosshatch algae are approved for use for the 2025 season. So if you didn't get to take a chance to look at my video that I posted previously, we dug deep into a little bit of the algae issues that first is noticing um, in gay piece discrepancy. Uh, first noted that while they're unable to test or predict the various ways teams may interact with the algae, general mechanisms which are very sensitive to the surface characteristics, such as a vacuum seal or stiffness, such as pinching algae tightly, or algae may be more susceptible to variance between the two algae types. All inflated game pieces, including those with the same surface texture, typically have some variance. We encourage teams, uh, we being first, to test their algae on both ends of the diameter specification to ensure their mechanisms work as intended. This is the big one. At official first events, only the crosshatch algae will be used due to the availability that first has on hand, production lead times, and to ensure that all teams have a similar experience with the algae used at events. So the only algae that is going to be used at official first events is going to be that crosshatch algae. And if you didn't get a chance to look into the difference between the crosshatch and the clamshell, be sure to take a look at this blog linked here in Team Update 4 for further clarification. Uh, they also went on to say that additionally, one or more crosshatch algae will be available for use on the practice field at official events for teams to test with. So if you only have clamshell, but you get to an event, crosshatch algae will be available for teams to use on the practice field. But it is important that this algae must be kept at the practice area and shared amongst teams so that all teams have equally opportunities. And first profusely apologizes for the error and know that it's not ideal for anyone. Uh, they also added in the game manual that section 14.5 um, events are no longer to events are no longer obligated to provide tables, although most will. Um, a table may or may not be provided. Jumping to team update five, um, we get a clarification on G412, adding um, a, a short distance, which is approximately three feet, and this is throwing corals in the reef zone. So if your team was planning on utilizing a strategy such as moving coral or moving game pieces similar to how the notes were last year um, in game piece volume, be sure to take a look at the G412 to make sure that your team is in compliance. Um, and then they just updated in E401 um, a rule from R302 to R304. Okay, jump into team update six. Um, one thing that we see first start to pivot here, and this is kind of the big thing moving forward as we get closer and closer to um, you know, events building up here in the competition season, um, we're going to start to see critical updates to software that is necessary for um, teams that are going to be competing, whether that's RoboRio, uh, the radio, um, some firmware updates with suppliers. So be make sure to take a look at these team updates, and I'll highlight them as the season goes on, but I want to make sure that um, you know teams are addressing these issues so that we don't have hiccups as they come to competition. The VH109 radio firmware update um, is a big one. Um, they want to make sure that teams have the updated version 1.2.8 as, as soon as possible. Um, and then at events, the radio kiosk is going to check for this latest firmware update and then update the radio if necessary. So if you want to make programming your radio a little bit easier, be sure to take a look at that. They also added a team radio configuration utility for open mesh radios, the old radio for the 2025 version. And this essentially allows the update for teams that have greater than uh, 9999 numbers. Um, to use that as a practice radio. But remember, the only official competition radio that will be legal for this 2025 season is the VH109. Uh, they also added a clarification on bumpers. Bumpers must be soft. Hard parts of bumpers must not extend more than an inch and a quarter from the rotor perimeter, and only padding per R402A, a cover per R402C, and soft fasteners used to secure padding or cover are permitted beyond this limit. So be sure that if you have anything that's going to extend more than an inch and a quarter beyond the frame perimeter, that it falls into one of these categories. Jumping into a couple Q&A questions that I had thought were important to see. Uh, question 94, which was asked by uh, FRC 1071. Uh, section 6.3.4.1, Part C, states that coral that are not preloaded are divided evenly between the coral stations. If there is an odd number of coral remaining after preloading is complete, how are they split amongst coral stations? Um, field staff will randomly determine which coral station has extra coral. So essentially, if there's an odd number of uh, coral that is available in the coral stations, there is going to be one that has more. If that matters to your team, it might be worth coordinating with the field staff prior to the match to determine which coral station is going to have more pieces, uh, because it will be uh, randomly determined on which coral station is going to have a larger one. As a reminder, human players may move coral between coral stations if they wish to during teleop and teleop only, provided that they do not leave an alliance area as noted as G429. So in Autonomous, you're stuck. If you're scoring all the pieces in the Coral Station Autonomous, hats off to you. You're probably winning the World Championship. But in my guess, 
Um, more than likely, the curl stations will not be cleared, and it, is, uh, it might be important for your team to understand which curl station has that extra piece. Question 102, are we allowed to use bumpers as counterweight? Our team uses two-piece bumpers. Is it against the rules to make one half heavier than the other to act as a counterweight, assuming that the weight is added through legal means, i.e. using a steel backplane material on one side of the plywood or the other, and the bumpers are still compliant with R408? This is important with uh, a lot of high extension uh, rules this year, with a lot of teams building high elevators or high... Um, you know, jointed arms that um, they keep, you know, the GDC is noting that they can't rule on a hypothetical robot design and the final decision of legality is lies to with the lead robot inspector at the event. But there are no rules specifying that the bumper needs to have a uniform construction on all sides. So important to note that theoretically this would be legal, but ultimately the lead robot inspector at the event is going to have the final call. Question 108, asked by Team 4061. Oh, question 102 is asked by FRC 9277, so shout out to them. Uh, question 108, asked by FRC 4061. The question to, um, the answer to question 97, along with Team Update 5's definition of a short distance, suggests that a robot that accident, incidentally bumps into a coral on the floor, causing it to roll more than three feet, a likely occurrence in our opinion, will be subject to a major penalty. Could you confirm that this is the intention? The GDC essentially answers that they can't comment on hypothetical scenarios, but as noted in the blue box, a coral is considered launched if it is shot into the air, kicked across the floor, or thrown in a forceful way. Generally, a robot that bumps into coral would not be considered launched, and teams should be aware of G409. So again, as I previously said in the previous team update, it's really important to um, understand that the strategy that your team is planning to use, and if you're planning on doing a high-volume game piece strategy and you know passing to partners, similar to what it was to last year, um, it would be important for your team to make sure that you're in compliance with um, G412 and G409. So one thing that I'd like to add for this video that might be a bit different is I want to add a tech topic and essentially kind of go, um, and I want to hear how teams are approaching this. One of the big things that has really changed from um, this year's robot construction rules to the past couple years is the weight limit. And the weight limit has gone down to 115 pounds. If you thought it was 125, make sure to go back and read the manual to adjust that. But um, I know a lot of teams reading some Open Alliance blogs are struggling to uh, find a way to get down to that 115 with the amount of complex um, robotness I'll use, which obviously isn't a word. But the amount of complexity that can go into robots um, you know, with this season and this game. And I'm curious how teams are approaching it. Are you cutting down on mechanisms? Are you um, finding different ways to save weight? Are you using something like SRPP or Max Composite to save weight uh, where you normally would use an aluminum or a polycarbonate? So let me know in the comments below. I want to hear from your team on how you are um, you know, addressing the weight concern and saving weight. Um, I think it's cool to have people from the community chime in and hear what they're doing to um, ultimately meet that end uh, robot rule this year. That's all for this FRC Updates Now video. Thanks, everyone, and continue to have a great build season, and we'll see you soon here at the competition. Thanks, everyone. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried-and-true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high-quality and affordable solutions.